Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth. It is Fasting Friday. Now, this week we began working through the book of Matthew with the hopes of learning more about the life and ministry of Jesus. Today we're going to be focusing on chapter 4, where we read about Jesus going through a 40-day fast of not eating food and then being led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I want to read a verse to you that maybe you've read through quickly and not really focused on before, but it's chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Afterward, the Holy Spirit... Catch this. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the lonely wilderness in order to reveal his strength against the accuser by going through the ordeal of testing. Challenging thought here, friends. There are times in life where we go through hardships that are really opportunities to grow. But did you catch who led him there? Who led him to that place? It wasn't Satan. It was actually the Holy Spirit. But it tells us why. The Holy Spirit led him there. Why? To reveal his strength against the accuser, the devil, by going through the ordeal of testing. You may be going through a test right now. You may be going through what feels like a wilderness or a desert right now. And you might be feeling like, how did I get here? But maybe if you really step back and look, it's the Holy Spirit that led you because he wanted to show you all this that you've been learning about God and who he is, this relationship that you've been developing, the strength and peace and wisdom and comfort that you've been gaining. Let's put that to practice here. Let's see just how to use that strength. Let's see how to use that peace in the middle of crazy. Let's see how to have that that understanding of who God is even when things seem out of control. You see, sometimes the very hardships that we go through are not by accident, but they're purposeful to give us as as believers opportunities to grow and to use the very skills that God's developing in our lives. Well, in this instance, God does just that. In Jesus' life, through these different temptations of the devil, it's proving again and again his trust and dependence on God himself. In In this chapter, you can read about three different temptations that Satan tries to use against Jesus. The first one, he says, And after fasting for 40 days, Jesus was extremely weak and famished. Then the tempter came to entice him to provide food by doing a miracle. So he said to Jesus, how can you possibly be the son of God and go hungry? When I think of this, when I think of pride and entitlement, you know, there's sometimes even as believers that we feel prideful and entitled simply in being children of God. Like we shouldn't go through struggle. We shouldn't have hardship. Almost like what I was just talking about a moment ago. And yet that's what Satan was using to try to tempt Jesus. Hey, you're God's son. You shouldn't go without. Hey, you're God's son. You have all power at your disposal. And yet Jesus wasn't fooled by that. Listen to how he responds. It says, he answered, the scriptures say, bread alone will not satisfy, but true life is found in every word which constantly goes forth from God's mouth. He used the word of God to combat what the devil was doing. Fast forward and we see Satan accuse him again. He says, hey, if you're really God's son, jump and the angels will catch you for it is written. And then Satan quotes scripture. He's like, okay, I see what you did there, Jesus. I can do that too. And he quotes scripture. Think about that. Crazy. And yet Jesus wasn't fooled. Once again, verse 7 says, Jesus said to him, The scriptures say, You must never put the Lord your God to a test. You see, Satan was trying to challenge Jesus to step out of God's timing. He was saying, Hey, jump, God will protect you. But Jesus wasn't ready yet. It wasn't God's timing yet to reveal fully who he was. At this point, he hadn't done a single miracle. He hasn't he hadn't proclaimed himself as the Son of God publicly. It wasn't God's timing, and he wanted to stay within God's timing. And by extending that power, by calling out on God to do a miracle in that moment, it would have shown who he was. So he wasn't fooled, and he said, no, no, I'm not going to put God to the test. The final one comes a little bit later on. In verse 8, it says, And the third time the accuser lifted Jesus up onto a very high mountain range, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the splendor that goes with it. All of these kingdoms I will give to you, the accuser said, or Satan, if only you will kneel down before me and worship me. Mm. Satan uses that same one on us. He might not word it like that, but here he's literally saying to Jesus, hey, just worship me too. You know, you can love God, but love me too. Let me be an idol to you. Let Let me put some trust in me. No. But yet Satan uses that one on us too, right? There's things in this world that we're, we're told we can trust. 
There's things in this world that we should put our faith in outside of God. That's dangerous. There is nothing in this world that we can trust more than the voice of God himself, than the word of God itself. This is what we build our life on. Not people, not an organization, not a government, not a product. Only God alone. And Jesus as well was not fooled. At this point, he got a little angry. It says, but Jesus said, go away, enemy, for the scripture says, kneel down before the Lord your God and worship only him. Couple of things we can learn from this. Number one, Jesus knew the word of God. Do we? Right? When Satan was attacking him, his first response every time was to quote God's word. We need to know God's word in order to be able to quote it. But he also stood in faith. He didn't give in to those temptations. I want to challenge you today as you're in a time of praying and fasting to take some time to consider how does Satan try to tempt you? Is it through some of these things? Is it through pride? Is it through entitlement? Is it through stepping outside of God's timing instead of trusting God's timing is perfect? Is it to put your faith, your trust, your worship into something other than God? Think about that and prayerfully today, using scripture, combat the lies of the enemy and ask God to give you strength and wisdom and courage to stand up in faith against the accuser. Hey, we're praying for you too and hope you tune in again tomorrow for another daily dose for spiritual growth.